What's up guys and welcome back to part 2 of my platformer shooter tutorial. Today we will aim to add in a new slime character as an enemy as well as adding our player death loop. Let's get started. Before we get started, make sure that you have watched and finished part 1 of my platformer shooter tutorial so you have all the necessary code and art already installed. Let's get started with the code. First of all, make a new variable for all sprites called death, and we're going to set the condition to break out of this repeat loop if our death variable is greater than nothing. So go ahead and drag in our boolean inside the repeat until section, and we should be good to go. Now let's start coding our slime enemy. Begin by going over to the player projectiles sprite and you'll see that we have an already built function there which is um, position xy. Go ahead and drag this right into our enemy sprite. So now if we click in here, yep, we have the exact same code. You can go ahead and delete the delete this clone block. And we're going to say when I receive tick, go ahead and make a new block called position. Now this is just to help us save a couple more blocks of code because underneath position, we will simply drag in position x minus scroll x. So we'll actually have to make um, two new variables for our enemy, um, an x and y variable. Make sure that they are both for the sprite only. And of course, y minus scroll y. Let's go ahead and drag in our newly made position block underneath our tick receiver and click the green flag and let's see what happens. Yep, we now have an enemy that is able to follow the camera and also hides on the edges. Great. So let's actually start coding our slime character. Now if you go to our costumes tab, you should see that we already have two enemies here. We have this cool slime dude, and also a lizard and a an flying eyeball. But we will try to code our slime first in this episode, and it also happens to be the first costume. So let's start first by making a block that will help us clone the enemy. So let's just do clone enemy at x add a parameter x, y, add a parameter y, and enemy type, which we will be modifying later in probably next episode. Um, go ahead and click on OK. And we'll also have to make individual variables like um, the enemy type so that the enemy can store that information for each clone, as well as the enemy health um, or HP, and also y velocity. So then our enemies also have gravity as they fall towards the ground. So I'm just going to go ahead and add those new variables. Make sure all of these are for the sprite only, so the clones um, each have like different values. And I'm just going to set my x to x, set our y to y. Um, we're going to set our enemy HP to 3 for now, and we're also going to set our enemy type to type. Nice. Finally, we'll have to create a clone of ourselves but we also have to make sure to make a new variable called clone ID so that when our tick loop runs and it's time for us to clone a uh, new enemy, um, the clones are able to differentiate themselves uh, from the original sprite and the clones. So go ahead and make a new, sprite, new variable um, for the sprite only again. And what we're going to do is that we're going to set our clone ID to uh, clone right before we create the clone. So then uh, when we check if it's a clone, um, the clone ID variable um, we'll you know return clone, um, but after we clone um, each time, we're going to reset our clone ID to the or original sprite or org for short. So then our original sprite knows um, that it's the only one that needs to actually clone itself. Great! Now we can start cloning our enemies. Um, before we move on, I just want to quickly add in a go to back layer block inside this tick loop so that our enemies always appear in the back because I like the player to be in the front. Um, and then we're going to drag in an if-else loop, and that's going to check if our clone ID equals to clone. If it equals to clone, then, you know, the clones will position themselves. But if not, then we want the original sprite to start um, checking if it is time to, well, create a clone of itself. So the way we're going to do that is that I'm going to make a new if statement saying that if our tick variable um, mod 60 equals to 1, now if you don't know what mod is, it's simply just uh, returns the remainder of the first number divided by the second number. Um, so if tick mod 60 if tick mod 60 equals to one, then we also want clones coming from left and right. So inside another if else loop, we're gonna say if pick random from one to two equals to one, 
or uh, two, let's say one, um, then a clone's gonna come in from the right. So we can do clone enemy at x, for example, 500, uh, y0, and enemy type 1. If it's equal to 2, then, well, we're gonna clone it at the left. So that's gonna be um, clone enemy at x, negative 500, uh, y0, and enemy type 1. So now if we test this, we can see that clones are appearing on both sides, but our original enemy sprite was showing actually, so I'm simply going to drag in an extra hide block inside our else loop to make sure that the original sprite is hidden from view. Great. Now let's start adding in our enemy physics. So firstly, we want to add in some gravity. So go ahead and make a new block. I'm just going to call it uh, Y Collision, um, and we're going to run it without screen refresh so that um, collisions are buttery smooth. Um, inside this new block, we're simply going to change our uh, y velocity by, let's say, negative 2, and we're going to change our y by y velocity. I'm going to throw in a position block, and we're going to add in a repeat until loop. So inside this loop, we're going to check if our y position is less than a value. Um, so that's going to create the illusion that the enemies are colliding with the ground. Um, but what we're actually going to do is that we're going to try to find a number that's similar to the ground's y position. So then the enemies actually know um, when it should start moving up. So inside the repeat until loop, we're going to say change our y by 1. And we're also going to set our y velocity to 0. Finally, let's also point towards the player. So it makes the slimes look a bit more realistic as they should probably be moving towards the player. So let's go ahead and test this, and if we run the project, we can see that the slime still appears to be hovering in the air. But if we adjust um, the y greater than something value in the repeat until loop to be negative 60, I believe, then it should fall perfectly right above the ground. So that is working really well. Now let's make our slime move towards the player. To do this, drag in an if-else loop, and we're going to check if our enemy type equals to 1, because um, the lizards and the eyeballs might have different physics uh, than the slimes. So if our enemy type equals 1, then we are going to firstly, I want to animate the slime. So go back to our player projectile sprite, and you'll notice that from last episode, um, we actually have this really nice switch costume animation piece of code thing. So we're just going to drag that to our uh, enemy sprite, and we can keep our one in the front because our slime is the first frame. And you can see that we have to alternate between four frames. So we're going to mod um, by four. And we're going to divide tick by six to get a slightly lower but better frame rate. Finally, we want to change our x position or our x variable um, by our direction. And we're going to divide that by some number. In this case, I'll divide by negative 45 um, because I think that's just the right speed for a sluggish slime. So, let's go ahead and test the project. And yes, we have lots of slimes that are now moving towards us, um, pointing to us um, in a very intimidating fashion, and um, we are still like much faster than them, so the game wouldn't be too hard once we add in our actual death or enemy detection. But just before that, I'm going to change our clone enemy block into x700 and x-700 so that the slimes clone more at each edge. Hopping into our player projectile sprite, I'm going to add in if touching enemies, then we're going to wait 0 seconds and delete this clone. Now you might wonder why we add in a wait 0 seconds, um, well it's just so that our enemy sprite actually has a bit more time to check if it's actually touching um, the player projectile or not because we don't actually know um, which tick receivers are running simultaneously or not. So we want to give a bit of a delay so that the enemies can check um, if they're touching a projectile and, um, and then reduce their current health. Now, in our enemy sprite, I'm first going to add in an if statement to check if our enemy HP is less than 1. If yes, then we're going to delete the clone. All right. And right after that, we're going to check if the enemy is touching a player projectile then we're going to reduce our player, uh, or sorry, enemy HP by negative 1. And we are also going to set our brightness effect to 100. Um, so when we actually hit the enemy, it's going to light up. So because of that, we also have to reset the graphic effects um, right before everything else um, at the beginning of our if else statement. So let's go ahead and test this. And we can see that the uh, code is pretty consistent. But occasionally, you may see a slime that dies in two or four shots. 
um, there are just like these minor uh, possible errors uh, in Scratch's code. Um, but this method is good enough for our purposes. So we only actually have one final thing left to do, and that is to make our player be able to detect if it's been hit by an enemy and then kind of die. And then the whole thing restarts. So we're going to do if touching enemies, then we're going to set our death to uh, something greater than nothing, which is anything else. Um, in this case, I'm just going to use one. Um, and then I'm going to plop that right around there and put in a position block right um, before that just to make sure that our collisions are accurate. And um, so yeah, if we do that, then our uh, loop should be able to break out once a player touches an enemy. And when that happens, we're going to execute another function that will be death. So it's going to be like a really quick death animation for the player. If you go to the costumes tab, you can see that we already have a uh, death animation in there. So we can simply switch um, to that frame and then we're going to kind of make the player blink a bit because I think that's like a really simple thing to do. Um, so we're just going to add in a repeat three loop. We're going to say uh, probably wait 0.1 seconds. Um, we're going to uh, hide, then we're going to show, then we're going to hide again. So that's kind of what I'm doing. Um, and at the end, make sure we actually want to hide the player. So put that in and we're going to add in a really quick delay. Um, it's really just personal preference, but I like to do half a second. One last thing to note, we actually have to delete all clones if we're going to rerun the entire project. So I'm going to broadcast a clear message uh, right above um, our setup function. And um, we're going to say when I receive clear in our player projectiles and enemy sprites, when I receive clear, then well, delete this clone. So I'm just going to do that for one of them and I'm just going to drag that to the other um, just to save some time. So that should be good to go. And I think we're ready to test our project. Um, let's run that. I am running around. I can shoot our slimes. If I just ram into one, then uh, I assume I die. Oh, I managed to kill that, but oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so I finally managed to die. Um, we had a nice blinking animation there, but now our players disappeared seemingly. And that's cause we forgot to uh, show it again. So let's simply drag in a show block right after our setup. So now our loop should be working. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, try die again, which seemed to be harder than uh, surviving. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. So we're now able to have a runnable game um, where you're able to shoot slimes and you are able to die and respawn. So that is great. Yeah, that pretty much brings a wrap to part two of my platformer shooter tutorial. Um, in part three, I just want to give you a quick preview. Um, so we're going to hop into uh, my projects um, and I've actually already coded it like a couple weeks ago. Um, but basically, um, I have I have expanded a bit on uh, the final project. And basically, we're going to have different enemies like um, jumping lizards, as you may have seen um, from the original. Uh, part one tutorial. Um, we're also going to have the mobs drop shards uh, when we kill them So that's also pretty cool and with shards We're also going to be able to get like a score system um, So just to make the game a bit more fun. So yeah, that's going to be our objective in uh, Part three um, if you enjoyed um, the series, please let me know um, Give a like and subscribe to support the channel and I'll see you in our next tutorial. Peace to Ukraine